This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Good evening and welcome. Well, in just a couple of days, possibly on uh, Sunday itself, India <coughs> will commission its first homegrown nuclear ballistic missile submarine. This is not just another unveiling of a weapon system. This is possibly the single most important military acquisition for the country since it is one of the bedrocks on which our nuclear deterrent is based. It's taken decades in the making and no one wants to spell out the details just yet, but it's clear that INS Arihant, when it's unveiled in Vishakhapatnam, will mean that India has joined a very select group of nations which build and operate their own nuclear submarines. On the show this evening, India's finest nuclear strategists and thinkers and naval experts to explain the significance of this development. Brahma Chilani, K. Subramaniam and Admiral Raja Menon, a former submariner himself and also a naval expert, they're all with us this evening. But before we start our discussion, just why is acquiring a nuclear submarine such a step forward for our strategic plans? Here's a report. You may have heard of stealth fighters. Jets like the American B-2, which are invisible to radar. But in fact, the ultimate stealth weapon is this, the nuclear submarine. Diving the depths of the ocean, submarines universally run on one principle. Run silent, run deep. For all practical purposes, make a hole in the water and do everything very, very quietly to avoid sonar searches from other submarines, ships or reconnaissance aircraft. In fact, detecting the latest generation of nuclear ballistic missile submarines is often next to impossible. It's a cat and mouse game which has gone on for decades, particularly during the Cold War, when the US Navy went to any lengths to track the movement of Russian nuclear submarines, particularly ballistic missile submarines. The goal for both the US and Russian forces was to stay submerged and hidden off each other's coastlines while being prepared to launch a volley of nuclear missiles at each other. Fortunately, that order never came. Typically, Russian nuclear submarines were thought to be more noisy than their American counterparts and often easy pickings for the electronically advanced detection systems on board American attack submarines. But there were areas where the Russians were ahead. Though noisier, several classes of their nuclear submarines were faster than their NATO opponents and more deep diving as well. The Russians also built this, what NATO calls the Typhoon class, one of the most feared weapons of mass destruction ever made. The largest class of nuclear submarine armed with nuclear-tipped missiles so long-ranged that they could actually strike their targets on the U.S. coast without having to leave the safety of their docks. In fact, the nuclear missile complex lies at the heart of the nuclear ballistic missile submarine. And some of the deadliest nuclear weapons ever created have been SLBMs or submarine-launched ballistic missiles. American and Royal Navy nuclear submarines are armed with the Trident II D-5 missile with a range of 8,000 kilometers. France has the M-45 and M-51. Russia operates variants of the missile designated by NATO as the SSN-23 Skiff. Russia is also testing a new missile called the SSN-NX-30 or Bulava with a range of more than 8,000 kilometers. And China is now developing the JL-2 missile, which can also reportedly strike targets more than 7,000 kilometers away. India will now join this select group of nations with its own nuclear ballistic missile submarine. But it may be decades before the Indian Navy picks up the expertise to operate these submarines, the most sophisticated and deadly military hardware ever built. But before we start, let's also mention that uh, it's not just the nuclear ballistic missile submarine being launched in Vishakhapatnam, which India is acquiring later this year. India will also be acquiring a nuclear attack submarine, which many consider among the finest in the world. So two important distinctions over here. There's a nuclear ballistic missile submarine and there's a nuclear attack submarine. We'll get to the difference over there. But what is it that India is acquiring from Russia? Russia is set to transfer the Akula 2-class nuclear attack submarine. It's called the NERPA. 
the submarine is likely to be recommissioned as INS Chakra. Remember, INS Chakra is a nuclear submarine that India had acquired uh, once from uh, Russia between 1988 and 1991, approximately. But the Akula 2 uh, class submarine, which India will be acquiring, is widely considered the most advanced nuclear attack submarine built by Russia till date. And as I was mentioning, India at least a Charlie class nuclear submarine from Russia between 1988 and 1991, which it had then named. Uh, INS Chakra. These names, Charlie, Akula and the like, are uh, NATO designated names. It's pretty much the global standard. The Russians don't think too much about them. But let's uh, try and uh, talk a little bit more about the significance uh, of this. Uh, Dr. Brahma Chilani, this is going to be the bedrock of our nuclear deterrent, uh, the nuclear ballistic missile submarine. Why? Because the nuclear ballistic missile submarine is the preferred option for small nuclear forces. In fact, without uh, this option, our first use posture wouldn't make much sense. For the first use, for the no first use posture to make sense, you need to be able to survive a first strike and be able to retaliate. And therefore, to have a sea-based deterrent is at the core of our search for a credible but minimal nuclear deterrent. And right now, we have um, major gaps in our deterrent posture vis-a-vis -vis China. So I guess this particular uh, development is an important step forward. All right, Mr. Subramaniam, um, we've discussed, I've discussed this with you in the past as well, and you made a very pertinent point in the past that India might now have uh, a ballistic missile submarine, but to actually have a useful operational fleet, India would need to have many more such submarines. Is that right? Yes, we will be needing many more submarines. If we are to have two submarines on station, you would require six submarines uh, for, the, uh, for the country. And therefore, uh, we will have to continue to produce five, six submarines. Okay, um, Admiral Menon, uh, from an engineering standpoint, there is perhaps no weapon system more difficult to build and operate than the nuclear submarine. Again, for, in simple terms, why is this the case? It is probably <coughs> the most, the biggest, and the most complex industrial product in the world. In many of the modern management techniques that you that are taught in management schools originated in the nuclear submarine project. You know, a nuclear submarine project is the, is the product of industry and design where you're putting together the, the, uh, the, the products obtained from something like 4,000 or 5,000 vendors to engineering standards which are not required in any other area other than space. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chalani, um, key to this is also not just the nuclear reactor itself, but it's the missile. Now, India has a missile called the K-15. The, the, the word Sagarika has been used uh, also. We're not entirely sure what the missile will ultimately be called, but that is our India submarine launch ballistic missile. Uh, how has that project been linked with the construction of the submarine? The nuclear sub is only a platform. Without uh, the weapons on board, it doesn't have any military utility. So it's arming it with submarine-launched ballistic missiles or submarine-launched cruise missiles is what will make INS um, Arihant a lethal element in India's deterrent posture. Now, the Sagarika project, or whatever you call it, is at a nascent stage. Mm -hmm. It's at the threshold. So we are still a few years away from actually deploying a submarine launched uh, ballistic missile capability on board in nuclear sub. From what we are told by DRDO, the Sagarika missile, that's the submarine launched ballistic missile, so far has a range of only 700 kilometers. For a ballistic missile, that doesn't really meet any requirement. It actually further reinforces our regional uh, deterrent uh, capability, that it doesn't reach beyond the immediate region. Now, if you want to be a world power, yeah. you need to have intercontinental range capability. And here the important point to note, Vishnu, is that of the three technologies, nuclear propulsion, SLBM, and ICBM, the first two are the most difficult, the most complex. Yet, India wants to become the first nation in world history to deploy a nuclear ballistic missile sub without going down the ICBM route. All right, uh, Mr. Subramaniam, let me actually uh, ask you a specific question about the use of this ballistic missile submarine. 
when it works out, when India has the missile that it actually seeks in terms of the range that the missile achieves, this is not a Pakistan-centric weapon, is it? This is a China-centric weapon. And perhaps that's, the, that's how people should refer to it, because not many people like to name countries uh, in our security or defense establishment so explicitly. If it is to be deployed in South Pacific against China, the Indian submarine will have to travel to the South Pacific. It would take many, many days to go there because you cannot go through the Malacca Straits because then the submarine would be discovered. Therefore, if you take both the travel time to and fro, the deployment time will be very, very small. So under those circumstances, the question of deploying the nuclear submarines in the Pacific against China uh, is something which we have got to think about. And therefore, we should not be talking in terms of the submarine being a China-centric uh, weapon. OK. Um, I also want to, at this stage, just for the benefit of our viewers, bring in a few details of nuclear submarines themselves. Now, there are different types of, of submarines, in fact. Uh, the nuclear submarines, non-nuclear <coughs> submarines. Nuclear attack submarines are submarines which are essentially designed to counter other nuclear submarines. Some, some of them also have the ability to fire cruise missiles to hit targets on the ground. But there are also nuclear ballistic missile submarines. That is what India is acquiring. And of course, there are diesel electric submarines, non-nuclear propulsion. This is what India has been operating uh, for decades. Uh, Admiral Menon, uh, endurance is the key reason why nuclear missiles are based on nuclear submarines uh, with a nuclear reactor and not on diesel electric submarines. Why is endurance in a nuclear submarine that key leap forward when you compare it with the submarines which have existed in India in the past? No, actually, <coughs> actually, there's one more reason. Sure. Endurance, yes. Uh, you see, deterrence is one activity which can be uh, most easily quantified mathematically. Now, if you <coughs> look at the human endurance of the crew of a submarine, they will be limited even in the space available in a nuclear submarine to about 90 days. Mm -hmm. So you're really talking about sending out a submarine for 90 days, giving the crew leave for 30 days, sending them to sea again for 90 days. This is a very stressful life. So to keep a certain number of submarines constantly at sea is the meaning of having deterrence 365 days in a year. Uh, the other reason, of course, is you can deploy a missile anywhere. You can deploy a missile at sea. You can deploy a missile on land. Why do <coughs> nations prefer to put missiles at sea? This is because <coughs> the problems of detecting a nuclear submarine is getting more and more difficult as time passes. All right, fair enough. Lots of uh, theories uh, linked to... Uh uh, to the nuclear balance, as it were, the use of nuclear submarines. Uh, it gets pretty comprehensive and pretty dense also at some stages. But this is one way or the other, a huge technological leap forward. And it is essential, an essential component of our nuclear deterrence strategy. There's more coming up on this program. We'll also be looking at the submarine balance uh, between India, China and Pakistan and, while, and how the induction of nuclear submarines changes things around significantly.